Well, nearly a quarter of Canadians say they are eating less than they should due to the rising inflation. That's according to a new survey from Food Banks Canada. The poll also revealed that hunger and food insecurity are increasing across the country, with lower-income Canadians feeling the brunt of inflation. One in five people reported going hungry at least once between March 2020 and March of this year, according to that new survey. The CEO of Food Banks Canada says this summer is expected to be their toughest in history. So for more on this, I want to welcome Bernadette Siraki. She's the executive director of the Kamloops Food Bank Society in British Columbia. So Bernadette, thank you so much for making some time for us. Thank you for the invite. So I don't know if you just heard it, but we, we just heard politicians debating back and forth on what we've all been experiencing. So inflation, the rising cost of living. We've heard from the politicians. Tell us a little bit about what you're seeing, the impact that you've seen. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, it is a very dramatic impact that we're seeing because it's not just inflation in one area. It's not just that, you know, prices are increasing with just food. It's rent, it's gas. In BC, we've just been getting over some catastrophic weather events where people had to leave their communities. And then, of course, people are, are um, literally just getting back on their feet after COVID financially. And so anytime you're dealing with somebody who is living at or below the poverty line to begin with, when you add all of these uh, compounding increase in costs um, for them, there's nowhere to, to get extra money from. So they are indeed using our services and um, for the most part cannot even afford basic needs. We're seeing that every day at our, at our food bank. And what are you hearing from some of these people who, who come in and use the food bank? Because the, the new statistics in this report are really quite something, that nearly a quarter of Canadians are saying that they're eating less than they should. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of what you've heard from, from people who do come in and use the food bank. I, I honestly believe that. You know, um, we have people that are using our service for the first time ever in the last couple of years and some that are using us for the first time in many years so and they're coming and saying things to us our clients will say if it wasn't for you i don't know if i would eat and you know often when they're coming to the food bank they're not receiving a week's worth of, of food certainly we're we're adding to um adding to what they have in their in their home already they can come once a week but still they're not they're not often getting all of the food that they require for their families for a week so i do believe that that's accurate wow and talk to us a little bit about what you're experiencing in the food bank in terms of community donations, for example. Are, are you noticing a mm -hmm. decrease in that? Are you having a harder time uh, making sure that your shelves are stocked? You know what? Donor trends are definitely shifting. And it started with COVID. Um, when people were at home, we actually saw an increase in donations. Um, and then we saw, you know, a, a subtle decrease. And now, um, you know, it's too early to call a pattern on this. But honestly, going into summer tends to be um, less busy time for donations for us to begin with. And then with this situation with um, people being faced with such increased costs, I, I'm not sure how that's going on. And we don't have core government funding, so we really do depend on businesses and individuals to um, assist us in what we do. And are you at all affected by some of the supply chain issues that we've been seeing in terms of in terms of actually getting food there? It just seems like it's one thing after the other, doesn't it? But uh, help Absolutely. us understand. Yeah, and even your costs. I would imagine that your costs have gone up as well. Well, they absolutely have. I mean, when you look at the increase in, in gas prices alone, um, you know, in a small food bank, like, well, a smaller city like ours, we're about 100,000 people in Kamloops. We operate three refrigerated trucks that go seven days a week, and our gas prices alone have gone up about $1,200 a month, um, just gas alone. Supply chain issues, we're experiencing what all of the stores have experienced, retail stores, um, you know, very similar landscape here as as what we witnessed in the stores with COVID and empty shelves and, you know, trying to source new um, new spaces and, and to get food in. And it's been a struggle. Um, but honestly, people have noted that and they've really ensured that we're able to feed who comes to our door. Because I think one perspective that has shifted during COVID is that people understand clearly now, maybe for the first time ever, that it could be them at our door. Because in some regards, it really was.
You know, we had a family who had to shut down um, their restaurant and they put their life savings into starting this restaurant. They were donating food from their, uh, you know, perishable product one week and literally a month later they were coming to use our service. So people are finding themselves in unprecedented circumstances, honestly. Bernadette, I have about 20 seconds left here, so just looking for a quick okay. thought. We heard those politicians debating what's behind this, what to do about it. What would you say to them? First of all, we're on this end of the spectrum with emergency food provision. Let's feed people when they need us. And the longer piece with legislative changes are just as important for long term. Affordable housing, affordable childcare, increase in minimum wage. Those things will all make a difference to the folks that are using our service and, um, and will only make us stronger communities. So we have to work on both ends of the spectrum to solve this. Bernadette, thank you so much for this. We really appreciate uh, hearing your perspective on this important issue. Of course, hearing about it in Ottawa today, but so great to hear yes. from you in Kamloops. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bernadette Siraki is the executive director of the Kamloops Food Bank Society in British Columbia.